Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. So today we have a little bit of a treat getting more towards um, controlling things, digital I.O., Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, etc. Uh, in a previous video I showed you how to set up a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian 1.5.0 um, or later depending on when you're watching this and also how to add node red to it in a fairly straightforward and simple way uh, But I really didn't show you how to do anything with that So I intend to change that now by showing you a little bit of basic um, design with node red and How to control um, some simple devices. So what do we have here? I have uh, two Raspberry Pis. One of them is uh, back here connected to my um, it, this one here it's on an LCD screen it's got the standard uh, Pi 7 inch screen on it and there is nothing else on here except for power being fed to it and a Wi-Fi dongle no keyboards no mice nothing else just power and a Wi-Fi dongle that's all that's on here um, as far as physical hardware is concerned now I have obviously added node red um, to it and I've also uh, obviously got Raspbian running on there as well. In the front here what we have is we have a second Raspberry Pi again no keyboard or anything else with a Wi-Fi adapter and it's got Raspbian and node red installed. So as you can see here is I've got a few things hooked up to the GPIO pins. I've got so I have hooked up a ground wire which goes across to the board and I have um, three other wires. One is hooked up to a switch which you can see just down here. Let me just zoom in on that a little bit. So we have a switch which I have connected to one of the GPIO inputs and we have two LEDs, a red one and a white one connected to two GPIOs which I'm going to use as outputs. So that's very simple GPIO, just driving a pin of the Raspberry Pi out to a few devices or reading from a device and I'm going to show you how to use node red to do that so there will be no coding whatsoever to do this you just drag we're just going to be dragging some things onto a screen and we're going to be just joining them up and adding a few parameters to those objects that we dragged on the screen now over here you can see we have a couple of servos now these are not hooked up to the Raspberry Pi these are hooked up to an Arduino Uno down here which in turn is hooked up via USB to a Raspberry Pi. And the Arduino Uno is getting its power from the Raspberry Pi as well. I have a separate 5 volts over here coming in, which is the power for the servos, because I don't want to overload the Arduino Uno or the Raspberry Pi. So I have two different types of servos. This big one here is a continuous rotation. So as you change the pulse width, uh, towards what would be normally 180 degrees, it will rotate quicker and quicker in one direction. As you go towards zero, it will be going in the other direction. And roughly 90, 90 or 50 percent pulse width will give you a stationary um, rotor. The other one is a, a standard positional servo that you might use in a radio controlled car or something for doing the steering. So zero would be fully in one direction and 180 would be fully in the other direction but it would not continuously rotate. It's positional as opposed to rotational. And both of these are using pulse width outputs from the Arduino Uno. And so I've got a ground wire going across and I've got two um, servo control wires going across one to each servo. And that's pretty much it. So I, don't wanna, I didn't wanna make this complicated. What I'm gonna show you is how you can put together solution as well as some direct GPIO using node red with no coding and it didn't take very long at all to get all of this working. Now the other thing I have this doing too is every time I press this button it's going to send me an email. So I'm going to show you a few different things. As I say this is just an introduction to node red programming. It might seem like this is really really complicated but I assure you it isn't. Don't just turn off right now. If you're a newcomer this is going to be ideal for you and it's aimed at you. So keep watching. I can also do all of this via my smartphone without any additional coding. So everything you're going to see here is all based on Node-RED running on a Raspberry Pi um, and controlled either by a browser or by a, um, well actually this one here up on the Pi, on one of the Pis, is also browser based. 
So smartphone, browser, regular PC browser, and you're going to be driving servos, LEDs, and reading from switches. So nothing too fancy, or at least it isn't, I don't think, anyway, for anybody. And so let's now have a look at how this works. Well, the first thing I'll do is I'll show you actually working, and then I'll show you how it's put together. So if here's the servos. So if I just start, all right, so I've moved the servo slider to the left. Now let me bring up the smartphone, all right, and here's the, all right, so I can, you can see I'm rotating, all right, I can change the other one, positioning. Okay, get that in the middle so it stops. Now here's the lights here. So I've got one of them controlled by the smartphone or any of the other devices. All right, I can turn it on and off. Sorry, covering the light on the smartphone. But I can also do this on Right, doing it on the other Raspberry Pi now. Or I can go up to a web browser on my PC and do the same thing. Oh, and that one also, by the way, is being driven directly from the Raspberry Pi and it has a dimmer control. So I'm also able to change the intensity of that LED using a slider. So that's something else it can do. All right, so I can switch it on and off, and I can change its intensity. All right, and again, messing with the servos. Okay, so what's running on the Arduino Uno is a program called Formata. It allows um, other devices to um, send commands to the Raspberry Pi and manipulate pins, whether they be analog or digital or PWM. Um, Etc. It, it's all available through Fomato. It's easily added. You just look for Fomato and you just, well, basically install it and that's it. There's no coding required. It's already ready to go. So I've shown you some of the things that we can do here and I'm now going to show you how easy it is to do this. Oh, and by the way, the smartphone and the display here, they are also, um, they're just regular web pages, HTML web pages. And so you can see up there on my PC, I'm also able to demonstrate the whole thing too. If I just take my mouse here and go over to one of those, whilst you may not see the lights right now because I'm um, not looking at it, but you can certainly hear it. All right, so I'm able to control it from numerous different places and a lot of the controls, if they're from the same web page, even though they're on different web pages on the different devices, because they're from the same instance of Node-RED, they stay perfectly synced up too. So if I actually go to the uh, touch screen of my 7-inch um, LCD screen and touch and move things, you can see the sliders are actually moving on the one we're looking at right now as well. So they're staying in sync. Now this doesn't work if you've got more than one node red instance running and they're doing different things on different ones. Obviously they're not, the way that I've done this simple programming, they have not been set to um, synchronize to each other, but they certainly will if you're all running from the same uh, instance of node red. It's an automatic feature. All right, enough demonstrating. Um, I haven't yet configured the white light on here, by the way, to work yet but I have certainly um, configured the red one to work. All right, let's go back now and have a look at the code that is required to do this. To show you the uh, programming involved, what I've done is um, switch to a different headset and I'm screen capturing from my Node Red, so just bear with me. So this script that I'm showing you right here, right now, is actually from Pete Scargo, one of my friends. I mentioned him in my previous video, and I will provide the link back to this in this video as well. But it shows you the um, Node-RED nodes that were installed. So these ones here are, are already included in his script. And there is one other one that we've add, I've added for the purpose of this demonstration, which is not in this script, which is actually one to 
install the Arduino um, libraries. And what that one is, is this, sorry, bring it up. So in order to add the ability to talk to Formata, um, there is an extra install you need to do, which is this one, which is the npm install node red node Arduino. Um, this gives you the two basic Arduino blocks uh, for the node red design tools. And there's also a little bit of a script that I will also provide the link to, um, which is here. It's under the node red docs hardware arduino.html. Again, I'll provide the link to that. And it, in here, it describes how to add the node. They actually have a pre-configured one just to make life a little bit easier for you. And all it involves, like I said, I, there is no programming. All you have to do is copy and paste this code into the node red. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, so let's go to the programming environment. I'm going to show you the two pages that I have. And then I'm going to delete them and reconstruct them so that you can see what's happening. Here's my web tool. As I said, I've got two Arduino, uh, sorry, two Raspberry Pis running the node red. Um, and this is the primary one that is actually connected to the Raspberry Pi. And this is the complete design of it. Uh, the second one here is on the other Raspberry Pi and all it's doing is actually talking to an MQTT server. Now you don't have to understand how MQTT works, you just need to uh, follow the instructions on how to configure Node-RED to use it. Part of the standard install from Pete Scargill's scripts is to install an MQTT server. So it's already there and up and running. Now if I just show you the um, Raspberry Pi right now, I just need to show you that because there's something happening on it that I didn't mention before. So on the Raspberry Pi, what you can see here is that the uh, pin 13 LED, which is the one that's normally built into Arduino Uno, this one right here, you can see it's flashing on and off at about one hertz. So it's on for half a second, off for half a second. All right, the other light underneath that, that's the serial communications coming out of the um, USB to serial converter, which is another Arduino um, chip is another Atmel chip, sorry. Anyway, the point I'm showing you here is this pin 13 LED flashing away uh, on and off for half a second intervals. So let's go back to the screen now that we're looking at. And what is doing that half a second flashing is actually this half second tick. This is actually just an inject node. Um, that if I just go in here, you see you just tell it it's a timestamp, it's an interval, so it's going to be repeating it on an interval every half a second. So all it's doing is sending out a pulse every half a second. That goes into a function which is toggle output on and um, output on function. If I look in here, this is a standard function node, which is this one here underneath functions. And if we go in here, you'll see that there's a little bit of script. Now, as I said, this gets added when we paste that piece from the other one. So you could call it programming, but you're not actually having to program it because I'm just providing it to you. It's just basically this is turning it into a, um, every half a second there's a pulse coming through. And this is basically just flip-flopping that context.level uh, before it goes into this Arduino node. The next node is an Arduino node, which knows how to talk to the Arduino. And we've told it what device we have here, which is the Arduino. We've told it what pin we're using, which is pin 13. And we've told it to use it as a digital pin. All right? And that's all you have to do. Um, I haven't given it a name here. Well, because I didn't code this block, I just put it in. You could give it a name to call it um, LED. I may call it LED 13, if you like. All right, and that's just changed the name on here. That's all that did. So that's all that block does. And that is enough there if you have the Arduino uh, blocks. And if, you've, if everything's installed properly, you should see the Arduino uh, down here on the left-hand side on the tools that you can select. And when you deploy this by just hitting deploy, it will deploy it to the instance of Node-RED that is running. So this Pi 2 that you're looking at right now this one here with all of the, the, the more complex, what looks like more complicated 
diagram, that's this one here. Okay, so the the one that you're looking at right now that is no red pi 2-1, that is this instance of the Raspberry Pi that's connected directly to the Arduino Uno and the servos and everything else. So that first one is simply flashing this pin 13 LED on and off, as I already said. So that's how that one works. The next one, which is the, it's got a slider for position that's coming from the UI controls down the bottom here, right? There's got the UI when that's installed. There's one called slider. Um, I've got an MQTT subscription, which is also bringing in a value. And that's forwarding it to another Arduino node, output node. And if I go in to look at this one, uh, you can see it's on pin six. That's one of the servos. I've called it servo. Uh, I've told it it's a servo type. That's one of the things that's directly supported by the formata and also the um, LE, sorry, the Arduino nodes that are in node red. So I just pick servo. And I just gave it a name of position. So I know it's the positional servo, not the rotational servo. And then the other servo that's connected here is called rotation, and it's on pin 7. And again, it's a 0 to 180 uh, output signal, but in this case, it's, you know, it's being interpreted as a rotational with a speed. And the signal, so again, there's an MQTT subscription, and then there's a, another slider which gives an output of between 0 and 180, which matches up to what the uh, Arduino is expecting. Um, the sliders, when they're configured, all I've done is given them a name. I've given them a topic because MQTT um, requires a topic as well as a value in order to do its thing. And I've told it where the servo, server is, the MQTT server, which is Raspberry Pi colon 1883. That's where the MQTT server is running. I gave it the topic of position, which is going to get sent to the MQTT, and a local name of position. So I'm, as I start rebuilding these, I'm going to show you, or sorry, describe better how they work. The next one here is a GPIO 17. It's just a standard, um, this is a Raspberry Pi pin, and all I've done is I've told it it's GPIO uh, 17, which is actually physical pin 11 on the 40-pin connector of a Raspberry Pi 2. I've told it I want a pull-up resistor on it because I'm connecting a switch to this, so this makes sure that it's a logic one normally. And I just gave it a name of GPIO 17 so that I know what it is. What that's effectively done is created an input from the Raspberry Pi. Oh, I also told it to initialize it as well with this checkbox. And I'm feeding that straight to an alert node. And the alert node here, uh, if I just scroll up to it here, it's a social and it's an email output. And the way this is configured um, really quickly is you, you tell it what email address to send it to, you give it the server name and the port, and you give it the credentials that you need uh, to access that SMTP server. And then you can just give it a, a name. So that's how you would send a simple email and we'll go through um, how that works in a moment. And that's just on a button press. So. I haven't showed you that yet, but we will do once we go through it. I press the button, it sends an email, I release the button, the state has changed, and it sent another email. Um, the next node that I've got here, or the next little set, is a um, dimmer in this case. I have a switch that um, it's just a standard node from the UI area, and it's configured to have a value of 100 if I press it, and 0 when it's turned off again. Uh, I've got a slider which has got a value from 0 to 100 and it's called dimmer. And I have an MQTT subscription, which is subscribing to the dimmer topic that also is feeding into this. So this GPIO 4, which is the same as the other GPIOs, is configured for a PWM output. And I showed you that working a moment ago. And it takes a value of 0 to 100 to work. So 0 being off and 100 being 100% on. And either the switch, when it's pressed, sends 100 out, so it turns it fully on, or when I unpress it, it sends a 0 and turns it off. Or the slider, which will be anything between 0 and 100. Or the dimmer, which will, uh, which the dimmer subscription, which means anything else that is sending a value to the MQTT server, um, this, this subscription called dimmer will also pick it up and apply it to the PWM output, which is what I was demonstrating to you before 
when I was using my smartphone and um, other things to control that intensity of the LED. So the first thing we're going to do is just build up one of the Raspberry Pis and get the local control working. So this one that I'm showing you right now that's on Raspberry Pi, um, the server called Raspberry Pi, I'm going, going to exclude that. I'm just going to delete this. And what you'll see is um, this one here, which is on the MQTT senders, uh, is going to disappear because I'm going to delete this and republish it, which effectively will clear it out. All right, so I'm going to just redeploy that to the server. And you can see now that these screens, when you're reading from the UI, they are updated on a very frequent basis. So it instantly knew that I had uh, now deployed an empty empty packet. So this is what you would get if you had just finished installing Node-RED and hadn't created anything yet. So that's I've just cleared that out so that we know it's not doing anything. Now if I go to the other one, uh, which is the one that's called Pi 2-1. All right, you can see that one on the right-hand side here. I've got dimmers and I've got servos. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to clear this out so that we don't have anything. I want to start with a clean slate. Okay, and I'm just going to confirm that deployment, and that's gone as well. So now, even on my um, LCD screen, I'm just going to I'll uh, add that as a uh, insert just somewhere appropriate, you'll see that it is also gone. All right, so there is the one from the camera looking at the LCD display of my Raspberry Pi, and you can see that it's also cleared right out there. And the other thing, I'm now going to put this down onto the Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, the Arduino, as well as the Raspberry Pi it's attached to, so that you can see the uh, LEDs and the servos while we start building this up. Okay, let me just move the phone out of the way for the moment. So this is our basic setup. You've got your Raspberry Pi, you've got your LED, you've got your switch down here, um, you've got your two servos, and you've got the Arduino. Now, I'm not going to show you here how to load um, Formata onto an Arduino. It's If you're familiar with Arduino Unos, then you just use the IDE, you take the Formata sketch and you literally just deploy it, and that's all you have to do. I will provide a wiring diagram as a separate screenshot and embed it full screen onto the script now. To open Node-RED, once you've done all the installs, by the way, you just type in the IP address or the name of the Pi or whatever, colon 1880, uh, and that's it, and press Enter, and it should load up with this particular page here. 